Bronco's been around for a while as a brand? Uh, 79, yes, I've been watching it, 980, the first, first ones we made. And, and you're making windsurfers? Windsurfers then, yeah. Um, yeah like right through till, uh, I guess, mid 90s, and then I got into uh, surfboards as well, and then uh, I guess about, I don't know, 2001 or something, I stopped making windsurfers and just making surfboards. A lot of longboards, a lot of longboards. Well, I started making surfboards for other people, and um, uh, well, for my brother, working with my brother, uh, making surfboards. And I think that was '74. Started yeah. when I first started making surfboards. Uh, Wind surfers in 1980, and then you know have carried on on through. And the last uh, few years, uh, developed the um, kiteboard market as well. I guess my uh, claim to fame, I suppose, if you want to call it that, is really the uh, sandwich construction of windsurfers, which I've developed into uh, cockles. I know that's worldwide technology nowadays, but uh, as far as I know, I was the first to do it. And what year was that? Uh, it was early 80s, probably 83 or something like that. And um, took a sandwich board over there, and guys didn't know what it was. You know. Well, what they call uh, you know, most boards are epoxy boards, oh, yeah, um, you know, like your surf tech sort of thing. That is the construction system, which is a sandwich board. It's got uh, uh, yeah, PVC foam or Divinacel or Clegicel or whatever the brand names, but the yeah. PVC foam sandwich layer on the outside of the blank, and that makes it strong. So it's sandwich glass each side of PVC foam, and that's what we've developed in the kite boards with a sandwich each side but doing some things that are fairly unique, won't talk too much about them. No, but, fair enough. Um, you know, certainly making strong light boards is the idea, and we have uh, hollow uh, pads, and put the, put pre pre -dent the board yeah. if you like, yeah. and then and put foam eight mils of foam in there to give you, and then five over the top, 10 yeah. to 13 mils of foam on your feet, which is really soft. Yeah. Been nice to ride on. And this is all more, a bit more strength. Isn't it's it? more strength, yeah. yeah. But also, especially for the um, strapless, it keeps your feet close. It's just a regular size pad, not a great big, thick pad yeah, on the back, so. which is, you know, not very nice to, you know, you don't want to be you know, perched up. You know. So did the um, the kite surfboard was was that the product developed? When with working with Dave, or something you started and then Dave came on the scene and helped develop it with you? I made three boards, uh, essentially for myself and demos, and Dave got on the demo first up and said, hey, this thing looks pretty good. The reason I got on, I mean, I guess Biggie, I was looking for Biggie and Biggie was looking for me, you know, like, mm. since I started writing Unstrap, I've been trying to find that board, you know, the one that was basically your favourite board to surf, the one that you can kite surf on. Um, you've got to have something slightly different than what you actually surf because you've, you've sort of been dragged in the line so you want to try and slow that action down a little bit. I think I've been through probably three prototypes. It's amazing how quickly we actually achieved it. You know, we went on one sort of angle and it worked. And, and it's definitely still a board that works for someone who's entry level and just wants to have get into the surfboard scene and likes a smooth ride, especially if you transition from a windsurfer, and it's the perfect board. But what, what we've developed now is the, is the board for an unstrapped or, or, or a surfer who likes to ride, ride strapped, but it's definitely a surfboard that's, you know, a lot of, definitely has feel to it. Design is all about the way riding performance. Yeah, that's it. With all the strapless boards, they're running with quads. You see some, some real hiccups with what is a quad nowadays. Uh, in that they uh, they just get out of control too quickly. You know that it's too scattery. If you're going to have a quad, it's got to be a quad. The fins, the front fins, have to be significantly further forward uh, than than the front fins on a thruster. And when you're putting all those boxes in, like that, it's not so bad if you're riding strapped. If you're riding unstrapped on a board, that board needs to be just balanced. It's, it's got to balance thing. You know, we've got the per we've got construction that is handling the riding that we're doing, yeah. and, and we've got a board that we believe is really on the money. 